Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, let's simplify down the process of solving absolute value inequalities. Basically, I'm just gonna run through a bunch of different examples of these types of problems, so feel free to pause the video whenever you need to think, try some on your own, and then unpause the video whenever you wanna see the solution and explanation for each of the practice problems. All right, so let's get right into it. For this first example, let's try something like this where we have the absolute value of x is going to be greater than or equal to six. Try to remember that we can rewrite our absolute value inequalities as compound inequalities. So in one scenario, we can say that x is going to be greater than or equal to 6. We're just going to drop those absolute value symbols. And in this case, because we have a greater than or equal to symbol, we're going to use the word or. And for our second scenario, we're going to say that x is less than or equal to, reverse the inequality symbol, and write the opposite of 6, which is going to be negative 6. These are our two scenarios or the compound inequality. Basically, what we're saying here is that the distance between x and 0 has to be greater than or equal to 6, so x has to be less than or equal to negative 6, or x has to be greater than or equal to positive 6. Let's take a look at a graph. To show that x can be greater than or equal to positive 6, put a closed circle on 6 and draw an arrow pointing to the right in the direction of all those solutions. And for saying that x is less than or equal to negative 6, go ahead and put a closed circle on negative 6 and draw an arrow pointing to the left towards all those values that are less than or equal to negative 6. This would be the graph of the solutions. For a second example here, let's try solving the absolute value inequality of saying the absolute value of x is going to be less than 0.5, or 1 half. Okay, so writing this as a compound inequality, we're going to drop the absolute value symbols and say x is going to be less than 0.5. But remember, whenever we have less than, this is actually going to be an and instead of an or. Okay, and so what we're going to write is for our other one is we're going to take our x and we're going to flip the less than to make a greater than and instead of 0.5 we're going to say negative 0.5 or the opposite. The values for x that are going to make this problem work are going to be between negative 0.5 and positive 0.5. Let's go ahead and graph this. On one end we know that x has to be less than 0.5 so I'm going to put an open circle on that right over here. And we also know that x has to be greater than negative 0.5, so we're going to put an open circle on there. And remember, x has to be less than the 0.5, but greater than the negative 0.5. So I'm going to go ahead and show that it's going to be any values in between here. And this is true whenever you have that less than sign. So just keep in mind that when you have that less than, it's going to be an and for the compound inequality. But when you have that greater than, it's going to be an or, and they're going to go in opposite directions. Let's try a few more together here. For a third example, let's try saying that the absolute value of x minus 5 is going to be greater than or equal to positive 7. So let's go ahead and take this absolute value inequality and turn it into a compound inequality. So for the first statement, what we're going to say is by dropping the inequality symbols, we'll have x minus 5 is going to be greater than or equal to positive 7. Basically just the same thing, but without the absolute value symbols. And because we have a greater than symbol, that means we're going to say or. And for our other statement, we can say x minus 5 is going to be less than or equal to negative 7. So just keep in mind that we're going to change the inequality symbol the other way and write negative 7 instead of positive 7. Now to go ahead and start solving this inequality, we can add 5 to both sides using the addition property of inequality. And when we add 5 to both sides, what we're going to get here is that x is going to be greater than or equal to positive 12. And for the inequality to the right, if we were to add 5 to the left and add 5 to the right, basically solving it a very similar way here, we're going to find that x is going to be less than or equal to negative 2. Now let's go ahead and graph it. To show that x can be greater than or equal to 12, we can put a closed circle on 12 and point towards the right, towards all the values that are greater than it. And for when we say that x is less than or equal to negative 2, go ahead and put a closed circle on negative 2 and point to all the numbers that would be less than negative 2, which is all the numbers to the left here. And again, just try to remember that when we have this greater than symbol, we're always going to have this or situation for the compound inequalities. And for the graph, the arrows are going to go in opposite directions. For a fourth example, let's try this inequality where we have the absolute value of negative 4x minus 5. Okay, that's going to be inside the absolute value. Now let's go ahead and write plus 3 on the outside of it and say that whole thing is going to be less than positive 9. While you might be tempted to separate this into two statements using our compound inequalities, 
The first thing we're going to want to do here is go ahead and subtract three from both sides of this inequality using the subtraction property of inequality so we can isolate the absolute value symbol. Isolating it, we can say we have the absolute value of negative 4x minus 5, and on the other side, 9 minus 3 is going to equal 6. Now that the absolute value symbol is isolated to one side, we can write our two separate inequalities. So first, we're going to have one scenario. We have negative 4x minus 5 is going to be less than 6. Again, that's one scenario. And because we have a less than symbol, this is going to be an and for a compound inequality. And for our second statement, what we can say is we can have this negative 4x minus 5. And instead of less than, we're going to write greater than. And instead of positive 6, we're going to write negative 6. All right, so hopefully you're getting the hang of this. And this is going to be a little bit more similar to what we were doing earlier. OK, now to go ahead and solve this one inequality to the left, let's go ahead and add 5 to both sides. This is using the addition property of inequality. And when we go ahead and add 5 to both sides here, we're just going to be left with negative 4x is less than, and on the right side, 6 plus 5 is going to equal 11. Going ahead and using the division property of inequality, we can divide both sides by negative 4. And when we do so, keep in mind when we divide by a negative, the inequality is going to flip. So instead of less than, we'll have greater than. And a positive 11 divided by negative 4 is going to equal negative 2.75. To solve the inequality to the right, we can go ahead and add 5 to both sides as well. And when we add 5 to both sides, let's see what's going to happen there. We'll have this negative 4x, we'll have greater than, and negative 6 plus 5 will equal negative 1. For this one, we're also going to have to use the division property of inequality and divide both sides by negative 4. And when we divide by negative, we'll have to flip again. So this greater than is going to become less than. And a negative 1 divided by negative 4 is going to equal a positive 0 0.25, or positive 1 quarter. Graphing this on a number line, I know that x has to be greater than negative 2.75, which is going to be right around here. But it has to be less than positive 1 quarter, or 0.25, and that's right about here. So if x has to be greater than negative 2.75, but less than positive 0 0.25, then it has to be sandwiched in between these two values. Keep in mind that for this problem, when we isolated the absolute values, we had a less than symbol. And when we have this less than symbol, we're going to have this and, and we're going to have this inequality where it's sandwiched in between two values. So hopefully that helps you remember it a little bit. For a fifth example, let's go ahead and try solving this absolute value inequality where we have the absolute value of 2w minus 1, and that is going to be less than 11. So our absolute value symbol is isolated right from the beginning, so that's pretty nice. We're going to go ahead and separate this into two separate uh, inequalities. So we're going to have 2w minus 1 is less than 11. Uh, because we have this less than symbol here, that means it's going to be an and. So I'm going to write the word and. We know it's going to be sandwiched. Okay. Um, and for our other statement, we can say that we have 2w minus 1. And instead of setting less than, we'll say greater than. And instead of positive 11, we'll write negative 11. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this thing. On the left side, we can use the addition property of inequality and add one to both sides. If we go ahead and do that, we'll be left with 2w is less than 12. And then on both sides here, we can divide by 2 and divide by 2. And so we're going to have w is less than 6. Okay, so that's going to be one of them. And for the other, let's go ahead and see how we can solve it. We can add one to the left and add one to the right side. After we go ahead and do that, what we have is we have 2w is greater than, and negative 11 plus 1 is negative 10, okay? And we'll go ahead and divide the left side by 2 and divide the right side by 2, and we should be able to say that w is going to be greater than negative 5. All right, so there we have our two final statements. So let's go ahead and see if we can graph the solutions. So we know w has to be less than 6, so we're going to put an open circle on 6. And we know that w has to be greater than negative 5, so I'm going to put an open circle on negative 5. Since w has to be greater than negative 5, but less than positive 6, it has to be sandwiched between these two values. And here's one last example. For this final one, let's check out this inequality where we have 3 times the absolute value of 5m minus 6 and we're going to take away 8, and this whole thing is going to be less than or equal to positive 13. Again, to get started here, don't separate this into two different inequalities for a compound. We need to isolate the absolute value symbols first. So let's go and start by adding 8 to both sides of this 
inequality. If we add eight to both sides, we're gonna be left with three times the quantity of this five M minus six. And this is gonna be less than or equal to 13 plus eight, which is equal to 21. Now for our first scenario, we're gonna go ahead and write five M minus six is gonna be less than or equal to positive seven. Again, we just drop the absolute value symbol. And for our second scenario, because this says less than, we know we're gonna have an and. So we know this is gonna be a sandwich one where on the graph, it's gonna be going towards each other. And for our second statement, we can say that we have five M minus six is gonna be greater than or equal to the opposite symbol. And let's write the opposite of seven, which is negative seven. Okay, now going in and solving the one to the left, we can use the addition property of inequality and add six to both sides. If we go ahead and do so, this simplifies down a little bit. We have five M is less than or equal to 13. And then what we can do is we can divide both sides by five here using the division property of inequality. And if we do that, we get M is less than or equal to five fits into this two times with three left over, but three fifths is really just six tenths or 0.6, okay? Uh, so again, I'm using decimals, but feel free to use fractions if you'd like to instead. Uh, on the right here, I'm gonna go ahead and use the addition property of inequality and add six to both sides. If we add six to both sides, we'll have, let's see, five M is greater than or equal to negative one. And then to isolate M, we can divide the left side by five and divide the right side by five. And then we can say that M is gonna be greater than or equal to negative 0.2 or negative one fifth. So now that we know the constraints for the values of M that make this absolute value inequality true, let's check out a graph. We know that M has to be less than or equal to 2.6. So we're gonna put a filled in circle where 2.6 would be on the graph, which is a little bit closer to three than it is to two. And then we know that M has to be greater than or equal to negative 0.2. I think negative 0.2 is going to be right around here. Again, it's negative, but it's pretty close to zero. It's one fifth of the way to negative one. And we know it's going to be sandwiched between these two because it's got to be greater than this negative 0.2, but it's got to be less than or equal to this positive 2.6. And that just about wraps up this video on six different examples on solving absolute value inequalities. I really hope that you found some value from watching this video and whatever quiz or test you're going to take on these types of problems, you're going to do absolutely amazing. As always, keep up the great work and I'll see you in the next one.